Hello and welcome to Spirit Pig. This is the show that explores how to live a fulfilled life. I'm Duncan CJ and today I'm talking to Tom Fortes Mayer. Tom is an author, an international speaker, Harley Street hypnotherapist and happiness expert and he is the man behind the free mind experience which is the three pillars of absolute happiness and all his work is with the aim to help as many people as possible enjoy more happiness and success in their lives. He spent the last 13 years developing innovative therapeutic approaches and his principles and practices combine teachings from like the world's ancient traditions with today's most effective rapid behavior change techniques and it's all about bringing life-altering epiphanies and lasting change and uh, so he's regularly a contributor to radio television and he's so passionate about bringing this self-managed healing work into the mainstream so into the mainstream uh, and so Tom thank you so much for being here it's so cool to talk to you today my pleasure, my pleasure. Really good to talk to you. Um, now, I was looking about, you know, a bit about your story and stuff, and um, I would love to you basically to share with everyone like a bit about like, how you actually got started into all of this, because I know that, uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you weren't particularly spiritual, you're not really, you weren't that interested in the personal development kind of stuff at all, if anything, that put you off quite a big way. But then this oh, is... This is it, yeah, no, I felt sorry for anyone <laughs> that was into any kind of personal development. I, I um... And spirituality, you know, my father was a devout um, scientist, he was a surgeon, you know, um, a very loving man, but, but, but he worked really hard on bringing me up as, as, as an atheist, you know, and he would, uh, and, and was very kind of clever at making, you know, he would, you know, we'd go to church for a christening or something, you know, and he'd just, he'd kind of look at me and kind of say he was getting itchy and churches made him allergic and just subtle, you know, subtle, Plug you know, the seeds. Subtle, yeah, you know, with the best of intentions. And so without any greater sense of meaning or purpose in life, I did what a lot of people do in that. So I, I didn't really, yeah, I, I didn't see the purpose in anything. And so I just, I had fun, you know, I was a hedonist. I mean, I, I put a lot of effort into kind of pursuing my own happiness, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't grounded in spirituality. It was grounded in, you know, the search for pleasure, you know. So I traveled, partied a lot, and I, I um, yeah. And I, and I could see, actually, that the standard way of living for a lot of people wasn't making them happy. So I was really looking for alternative ways of doing that. So I ran parties, and I made money from running parties. And I thought I was at the top of my game and, um, and then had just a massive epiphany. And it completely changed everything. You know, it was essentially, it was a moment of experiencing myself uh, without fear. And... It was only at that point I realized how much fear had been in operation and how much nonsense and how much effort I was putting into maintaining an identity or a cool persona. And so I was kind of overwhelmed by a sense of exhaustion and elation, really, and um, was just fascinated with what had happened because I could actually map how I'd had that epiphany you know I could see the influences you know one person had said one thing at one time and then this little thing I read in a book and and then this one situation which was the key moment where I was witnessing an argument you know it wasn't for me some kind of glorious spiritual landscape or something you know it was yeah I witnessed an argument between a chai walla and an Indian holy man and had a complete you know just my whole world view changed and since then all I've been really doing is one trying to understand that. I wasn't a spiritual seeker. I didn't have a spiritual tradition. If I'd been seeking, then I would have fitted that into uh, an existing kind of spiritual paradigm or an existing religion, but I didn't have any of that. So I had to try and work out what had happened. And at the same time, I've been obsessed with, well, how could I help other people have epiphanies? You know, where do epiphanies come from? How can you engineer them? And so I went into private practice to really experiment with that. If I'm honest, and so was was this kind of founding that? So you had this 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 moment, and yep. it just came about. And like you said, you weren't you weren't planning it. It ju it just happened. But then what your your mind was sort of like reverse engineering it, thinking how could I replicate this? How can we make this happen again? So if it happens to me, could you repeat that process for other people? Was that the the way the, exactly. the mind? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I really got to experience firsthand that you can have profound life change in one moment. Now. I, I realize that, you know, those kind of liberating moments are not the end, they're the beginning. And as been said many 
times before, you know, and Jack Cornfield says, after the ecstasy, now the laundry, you know, you have to then <laughs> clean out the psychology and the conditioning and all of that. And that's ongoing. But that one, that one taste, that one first experience was so profound that my life was utterly changed by that. And I'm excited. Uh, I believe that people can can have significant change quickly, you know? And yeah, there's loads to do after that. It's not the end, it's the beginning, but... I love that I'm expression. Impressed. I've never heard that, I've never heard that Jack Cornfield. Well, after, uh, after it's now the laundry. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a Jack Cornfield <laughs> book title, actually, and it's a brilliant book. Oh, amazing, because then, okay, so fast forward a bit, so that, that, that was there, but then that led you to yeah. this, this, this research, this discovery. I mean, did you just, what you just, did you just throw yourself completely just head first into everything? You wanted to find out more. Is that where the, the study, oh, the learning, yeah. I was, research? I was, I was, I was like, you know what, that happiness, I found out that happiness, I'd been, I'd been doing all sorts to find happiness. You know, I was doing everything I could to experiment with what might make happiness. And when I experienced that kind of absolute happiness, that, that was the good stuff. You know, I wanted to, you know, where does that come from? How do I how do I build a life where I get to experience that kind of happens? And so, yeah, I've been on a lot of courses. I, I went from not caring about reading at all. I mean, you know, my poor father, this academic man, like desperately trying to get me into learning. I just showed no interest, you know. And I, but that meant I had an incredibly clean brain. I had no no academic conditioning in here whatsoever. Um, and so then, yeah, I was able to kind of just, so I got all of the, yeah, everything I could find on happiness. So reading all the old spiritual texts, the modern psychology texts, philosophy. And, and it was really obvious to me pretty quickly that they were all saying pretty much the same thing, right? They all had different ways of getting there, but the, the essentially, you know, if, you, if fear is operating in you, you're going to run around like an idiot if you run around like an idiot, things aren't going to be that good for you, right? That's pretty much it. And, and, and to, to, to move beyond your fear and to be move away from being overly identified with who you think you are and work on being a little bit more loving of, of reality and yourself within that, um, things get more brilliant, more beautiful, more grace flows, things get easier. It was as a result of doing this for 15 years that I realized actually... Actually, there really are three key areas that if you if you get this, if you get these three pillars, then you are pretty much set to being able to manage what it is to be alive in this world and maintain happiness. You know, and it's not listen, it's not about having a kind of simpering, inane, blissed out grin on your face 24 seven. I don't I don't think that's possible. I don't think that's I'm not sure that's even wanted, but. <laughs> It, for me, it's what I would call emotional fitness. You know, they say physical fitness is the speed at which. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're mentioning this because this is this is something I read and I, I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna ask you about this exact point. So yeah, sorry, go for it. It's a great analogy. It's a great. It's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So physical fitness is measured by how quickly you can go up to your full heart rate and and return to normal, right? And for me, that's where emotional fitness is. It's like, you know, we're going to get triggered. We're going to get angry. We are, you know, these things are going to happen. But it's like, what's your return rate? How, how quickly are you able to come back to your loving center and be at peace with what it is and forgive those people around you that are, you know, in their stuff and all of that? You know, it's, that's the key, you know. It's not some endless high. It's, it's really effective ways of bringing yourself back into balance. Because being human is, is crazy, you know. It is complicated. We are not, we, you know, we're animals that are doing our best to civilize ourselves. And we've got a lot of evolutionary stuff going on and a lot of survival stuff going on, which makes it really hard, you know, really hard. Yeah. No, because I just love it. Cause, um, yeah, it's, it's the idea because, I mean, I think it's almost searching for the wrong way. If you're just like okay, I've got to be happy, 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 okay, I've got to avoid depression, I've got to avoid, like, upset or, like, jealousy. Okay, these are things going to come and go. Just, just let them come and go, but then just get back to that happy state as quickly as possible, like, and actually, that's, I just, I'd never actually heard it um, put like that, and so it's, it's yeah, it's really, really interesting. Um, and so that, that, that's, that, that's the peace one. So what are these other ones, like, power and purpose? So what, what's power about? That's the second pillar. The second pillar is really about understanding because if you, you know, like, so you have peace because you can, you can have power and you can make money and you can have agency in the world. But if you don't have peace, nothing, 
nothing feels good anyway. So, you know, you have to come at peace with who you are and how the world works for happiness to be possible. Pillar two is about understanding that we have this incredible potential inside us. And unless we know how to engage with ourselves and bring out our best, we'll go crazy. Because we'll have all these loving intentions, we'll have all these spiritual beliefs about being an amazing person, yet we'll still be petter, petty, we'll still be competitive, we'll still be angry, we'll, all the behaviors, we'll still smoke and drink and, you know, unless you understand the psychology of behavior change and, the, you know, some of the cutting edge stuff about high level performance, right? Like every single businessman, right, who's at the top of their game, they have coaches, they have advisors, and there's technology that's been developed in these, which applies to being a parent applies to being an employee, applies to being a boyfriend, you know, applies to being a son. It's, there's a way of understanding the language pattern, your belief systems, your expectations, and your mind programming that is vital. You know, this is the stuff that should be totally taught in schools. This is way more important than memorizing, you know, the capital of Guatemala. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so for for me, it's that education is woefully lacking. So pillar two is about giving people the skinny on, on, on yeah, how their mind works, you know, and, and, how, and how to change behavior. It's vital. And then last but not least, is it purpose? I mean, is, is, is it as simple as this? Can we break it down to these three? If that's Because there's so many things and um, it's almost overwhelming. Like every single day, you know, it's, it's the same health or anything. There's like so many things we're meant to be doing. It's like it's almost overwhelming so we don't do I anything. Agree. So do you think if we can just nail these three things, then that is just like... I mean, bear in mind, I mean, yes. But I mean, the triple yes, we'll come back to the third pillar in a moment. <laughs> the triple yes of Friedman is, I get keep you hanging, right? I know. Um, the, tri the, triple, the triple yes of Friedman is about, for me, fr the free mind experience is a euphemism for a moment of clarity or enlightenment. And essentially, my understanding of uh, an enlightened person in an enlightened moment because it's for me the whole human experience is in fluctuation grace you know we're in and we're out and that's all part of it but it's a person who can 100 percent 100 percent say yes to exactly what is happening so there's no resistance no fear now in order for a person to be 100 percent at peace with what's occurring they have to be 100 percent at peace with who they are because you're in the moment, you're part of that moment, right? So that, that, you can't be like, I'm at peace with this moment, but I'm still, you know, I wish I was a little bit, you know, this or that, or, you know, it's like, that doesn't work. And we cannot be 100% at peace with who we are unless we are 100% at peace with every single thing that's ever happened. Every single thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. Okay. They, they, they work together. So it's not like you do pillar one first. Because actually, at the high point, they all come together. Because pillar three purpose, I went, I kind of lost my way. I believe I've been doing this for about five years, and then I got really convinced that actually, you know what, I was, I was tired of being a therapist. I wanted to go to schools and educate kids on these kind of principles so that I could put psychiatrists out of business. You know, two generations down the line, it was just like let's just teach this stuff in schools. <clears throat> but it's, um, but I became an activist. I had a real purpose, and I really lost my way. I had this sense of this, and I've been on these courses, and I got really fired up to think it was my job to save the world, and that there was a problem. And I was in resistance. I was, uh, there was a violence to what I was doing. You know, I was saying no. Whereas I was fighting the system to say yes, but in fighting it, I was saying no energetically. Spiritually, I was... It was a contradiction in what you were putting out there and what you're saying, what you're doing, and it wasn't congruent. No, and everything fell apart for me, and I learned, you know what, purpose, pillar three, purpose is not about digging holes in Africa and doing good charitable work. Yes, do that, great. Your purpose is finding your peace, finding your power, and then loving your life outrageously. You like creating a life where you are lit up. That's your destiny. That's your purpose. You've been embodied with these preferences and these experiences and these challenging conditions, which you'll then, if you have the opportunity to become liberated from, like what does your heart crave to do? What lights you up? That's your purpose, you know? Now, it's likely that in that place, 
you'll be phenomenally successful and you'll probably give a proportion of your money to charity and, and you'll pay other people to dig holes in Africa. Or, you know, it's not about not being charitable, but it's, it's about truly understanding. And when we can, the, we can understand that that peace and that power and that purpose becomes one thing. And for me, the, the, so the driving force in Pillar 1 is emotional intelligence. Understanding our emotions and being emotionally fit. In pillar two, it's success psychology. It's understanding the mechanics of bringing out our best behavior. And in number three, the, the school of thought and the school of thinking, which to me brings the world's deepest spiritual stuff to life, is oneness philosophy or oneness spirituality. I call it oneness philosophy because I don't want to freak people out. But, you know, it's essentially understanding that all things are connected we're all interdependent. And when we, when we can transcend our small, limited, and fearful personality and connect more to our large, joyful, unlimited universality, then, then we are at peace and we're completely connected to our power. And in that place, in every situation, all we have to ask ourselves is just two simple questions. And... And we know, we know what to do. We know, we, or more importantly, we know who to be, you know? And those two questions, when we're, when, we're, when we're clear, when we have that internal peace and we're connected to our power and we see all things as connected, then every single moment is divinely ordained. Because can't, we can't have moments of beautiful synchronicity at one moment and that just be some random thing and then the next day when you're stuck in traffic and you're late, that's not within the divine field of perfect order. How could that be? It is either on or off. It can't be on at times and off at times. Therefore, if it is on, and of course it is on, then it's all part of the onness or the oneness, right? It's, and if that's true, then how you pay for your bill once you finish this conversation or how the next person you randomly nearly bump into on the street, it's like, seeing the divine purpose in that it's not about doing good it's about being free in each moment to respond to what's being asked for which is always what's the truth and what would love to right and and it's the truth for you what's your truth you know who do you want to be in this moment and and having the courage to be that is your spiritual practice as far as I can tell, that's the purpose. And I think that when you said there, what's your truth? I think that's the really, I think mean, that's the interesting thing, like the your bit, because it's not like there's a universal truth, this is the way it is, this is, this is the right way, and then it's just like, no bullshit. Like, it's like, yeah. what's, each person says what, just got to ask that to themselves, and then there's no right or wrong, it's just a whatever is truth to you. Yeah, and for me, the, my practice is, it's really about courage, right? Because actually it takes real courage to, to to respond to the moment you know and do what because sometimes the moment's saying you know go and talk to that girl and you're like but she's surrounded by friends like i think i'm an idiot you know or it's like it's it is calling forth and for me i love sitting in circle you know on various courses or leading courses and 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 and, and getting people to focus really on when they're feeling compelled when they're feeling compelled. sometimes people can make a comment in a circle because they're clever or they've read something in a book and they, they've got something smart to say. And getting people to get beyond that and to get into really what's feeling compelled here? What, what do you want to share that if you didn't share today, you would feel bad about tomorrow? That's interesting. And, and for me, when you come more into the heart and you can pay attention to that feeling and you can trust your intuition and have the courage to act on it, then you do get a chance to see the divine in ordinary life, you can you can see the magic. The synchronicities become more 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 regular, and and you get a confirmation that 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 movement. You know, it's a little bit like. Do you remember that? Um, I don't know if you ever played this or if you ever played it with a young kid where you've hit something, and they're looking around the lounge, and if they get closer, you say warmer, 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 hot, yeah. hot, 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 and and if they get further away, you're like cooler, 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 cold, 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 cold. Well, we've got this sat nav system in our, you know, in our heart that basically tells us when we're on point, you know, when we're in alignment, when we're, when we're, yeah, if there's a vibration to it, you know, and for me, it's feeling that yes, 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 you know, or like, mm, 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 you know, and just checking back in yourself and just getting just yeah. So how, how I mean, how 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 do you how can people get more in tune that? And is that just through 
meditation was actually like just just really just sitting down and being really honest and actually being like just asking yourself those two questions just like really just ask yourself those questions well, again and again or i mean for me it's it's a good question and for me the most important thing is is is, is really being clear of your old unresolved emotions you know and but also having a clean field you know so being healthy and fit putting the right things in your body it's like having a golden sat nav that can take you to a joyful life and kind of smearing so much shit on the top of it you can't actually read the dial sorry for my language but you know it's like what if like imagine you were given this compass that will take you to the golden life of joy and you either don't listen to it you don't turn it on or it's so smeared in dirt you can't make out the reading right I'm just laughing because this is the second interview in two days where they've used the magic of shit and then it just made me, it just made, it just made, it just made me laugh. How are you attracted this into your life? I don't know. There's obviously just so much bullshit around. Everyone needs to cut through that. I just saw I was I laughing. Found out, I found out the, 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 the sign language signs for bullshit the day. Can I show it to you? Yeah, yeah, please. Hold on, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah. I oh, really? I'm <laughs> scared at the other end here. <laughs> Good, isn't it? People who are listening to so, listen, listen only might might not be able to see that, but yeah, that's why you got to watch the video. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Exactly. It's a video. So, um, yeah. So, it, it, you you know what? Sometimes we'll be in a situation. We'll be like, that guy's bullying that girl, you know, and we'll get upset and we'll think that that actually in the moment we should respond and intervene. But actually, if we haven't resolved our own feelings and we have a memory in our past where we were powerless when we. Or eight, watching our father be mean to our mother, for example, then if that will affect our view of reality. And that projection will cloud our ability to see the truth, the actual truth, you know. So we will be, we will be operating. Now, the beauty is, beauty according to the principles of oneness, was if you are projecting and you get that wrong and you get in the way, then you were meant to. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, this isn't about feeling bad about, you know, being out of alignment. It's... Uh, it's knowing that when you are, you're meant to be, and when you're not, you're meant to be. But for me, uh, you have a much greater chance of living a fulfilled and happy life if you are at least aware of that process and trying to pay attention. You know? So one of the reasons why I run events which are about coming together without drugs and alcohol and celebrating life is because the more I get into this stuff, the more I realize that presence is the key to everything. Yeah, I totally agree. So, any distractions or anything. So yeah, meditation is great, you know, it just helps us get present. Not putting toxic stuff in our bodies, great, because we can feel what we need, what's going on. We can, getting all the resentment and the jealousy and the pettiness out of our emotional core, because, you know, <clears throat> those days are over. It means that we can actually finally get present and say yes to what's occurring and know what's being called for to evolve. That's our purpose, and we're providing an incredible purpose. I mean, you give me the choice of some aid worker doing great things or someone who's so present that they know exactly what to do in each moment. That person has changed the world in every single, with every breath. That's so interesting, yeah. And also, I love, um, <laughs> I, like what, I like what you were saying earlier about um, uh, <laughs> changing, I think, the word spirituality <laughs> to philosophy, because it's, it's interesting. When you talk about these kind of like these topics, um, some people just they can, can resonate with it. Then some people, when they hear the words like um, truth or energy and stuff like that, then it's, it's, it's almost quite alienating. So it's actually quite interesting to talk about them without I don't know. It's just because some people can't even actually listen to the actual the core message which is being said because they find it quite off-putting all the kind of the yeah, lingo I get and it. stuff. That guy. I was that guy. You mentioned yeah. spiritual to me twenty years ago. I feel really sorry for you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But now, 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 you know, I understand that every single faith in the world is just man's attempt to understand how best not to be a dick. I mean, I get that now, right? <laughs> it's so true. I love that. Yeah, well put. Right? That's it. You know, and, and there's different practices and they have different how wide to be a dick, meaning. <laughs> of the... Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and good, right? That's, that's a good thing. Arguing about being a dick about your route to not being a dick is really ridiculous, you know? And so, uh, you know, for me, what a liberating thing in my life was the etymology of words. And when I discovered that the root of inspiration was the same as, as respiration, breath, life force, and spirituality, it's all about whatever lights you up, you know? And 
for me, one of my favorite pieces of etymology is the, the word enthusiasm, right? The, the word enthusiasm literally means to have the divine within. And you know, when someone's entheos, when someone is alive with their passion, they've got that divinity going on, you know? And it's like, well, what, what needs to happen in your life for you to look like that, you know? That's your purpose. It's not about shoulds, it's about joy. I like that. I've never, I know, yeah, and, 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 and enthusiasm means to and have. Enthusiasm comes from the etymology entheos, and meaning theos. to have this divine or God within. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. One, one, um, one quote which I saw, you, you posted, which like, I really just, it, it jumped out. It was like, you said, sadness occurs because of the distance between reality of our life and the potential life our heart knows it could be, I, it could be enjoying. I, I love that because it just, it's just, yeah, that, that, that sadness is that, that gap in between what, where we are at present to where actually we can feel like we should actually be. Is, is, is that right? Yeah, well, could actually be. And, could, could be. And for me, the, the greatest thing about that was if you are sad, you are depressed. And I, I, don't, I don't dismiss that as, a, as, as, you know, I have been through difficult times and I know what a big deal that is to be able to reprogram that stuff and get beyond it and to, to, to trawl into the darkest parts of it and get the meaning. So I'm not being glib or flippant about how difficult sadness and grief can be. But what I love about that idea, and I'm glad you liked it, um, is at the good news is... The, dis the difference, we're only sad because of what's potential. So, because it's the contrast, right? And so therefore that must mean by definition that you have that happiness and that enlightenment and that freedom ready to go. Because it's in your heart and it's the distance, you know? It's the life's not reflecting the truth. So the truth is that you are free and can be free. And that's, I think that's good news, you know? That means there is a map, right? Yeah, that's no, good. It's just... Yeah, I like, I like it. You've got actually sort of stepping stones where you, where you know you can go. Yeah, and, and for me, usually depression and sadness are, are a really, really healthy reaction to lots of the way life turns up for people and the way people, the choices people are making, you know? It's like, it's like depression is a time to, to not leave the house because if you did leave the house, the way you're being is not, is not, is not serving your highest, most beautiful, loving possibility. So your system is going, you know what, you're not looking after yourself or you're not safe or you're going to get in another relationship where you'll get hurt or your, you know, your work's destroying your soul. It's like stop, <laughs> rethink, you know, change your approach and then leave the house. You know, it's taking away your energy because you're using your energy in ways that aren't serving you. It's love. Yeah, I've never heard it described like that. So it's almost like you're... Yeah, your, your, your body's system just to tell you, it's often like, you know when you're getting ill, you often know that something's not right, you've got to change it. And so it's, it's a very like straight to the point, tells you, hey, I'm not happy right now, your body. And so I guess it's the same system, isn't it? It's exactly the same system. The, the, when I had that moment of happiness, what was filled with was a sense of everything fitting together. There was a sense of perfection. And what I really struggled with for a long time was understanding. So the question, when someone turns up in my private practice, they turn up with a condition or a challenge. My, my underlying question is, how is this perfect for them, right? Which is a challenging question for someone that's really struggling with something. Uh, my most popular video by far is on self-sabotage. I'm happy to give the link to it. You can, you can distribute after the thing or whatever. Because this key point is what makes up this absolutely key part of pillar one. And it really, and this is an operation for everyone. It's not, it's not, is this affecting you or not? It's to what degree? And essentially, when we're younger and we're dealing with frustrations and disappointments of the parenting we received, right, which is standard, even if we had perfect parents, there were still moments when they weren't present or as caring or considerate as they could be, right? And yet, lots of parents, lots of the time, um, aren't able to give children the kind of attention that they would like. And in those moments, it's really difficult for children to um, judge the parents. Right. So what a child does is they usually try and avoid the pain of disappointment so, and avoid the judgment. So they tell themselves, well, no, I, I, it's not that they didn't give to me, it's that I didn't deserve it. It's a simplification, but it's very, very profound. And because in a world where it was perfect, the one thing I couldn't understand was why people really did mess things up for themselves. Right? You know, where they really would push away people that would love them and they would chase people that didn't seem to. Yeah, where they would 
they have an opportunity at work and they wouldn't take it, or worse, they would sabotage it, you know? Yeah, so interesting. Or, or um, why we, we do it, see our patterns and with our eyes wide open go, I know this isn't right for me, and still do it, right? Still do it. And it took me a long time to find the perfect explanation. But when I started um, helping people really connect with the primary pain of the disappointment and give them the courage to just to feel it without trying to change it, then that idea that there was something wrong with them became totally redundant. And the self-sabotaging behavior just goes away. And then you can really see that they're really there really aren't any accidents and there really aren't any things that are out of order. But until we get that, God, life will be really hard and we will F things up for ourselves and we will, we will do things that seem far from perfect and life won't feel perfect. It will feel awful. But that's the same system that when we get around it on the other side will work for us to create a life of fulfillment. So we can't complain about it on the flip side because it's, it's the same tool. We're just... It's like sitting at the piano, playing badly, and complaining about the music. Right? This so would just be, yeah, and it's the same piano if you could be, you know, you could be doing Mozart, yeah. and it's, you know, it's the same thing there. But yeah. yeah. So don't, don't slag off the piano. Now listen, that, I'm, not, I'm not being flippant. People think sometimes I'm saying, oh, just, you know, stop being depressed. I don't mean that at all. You know, some people's childhood, some people's stories are brutal, and it takes so much, and they tend when they transcend their challenges, the gifts they have to bring for others in helping understanding and get light into dark places. You know, it's amazing. Some of the most amazing healers have had the most brutal journeys, you know. And so, I, again, I'm not being glib about how difficult it can be to play nicely at the cosmic piano when our fingers and our spirits have been so trampled upon, you know. And I'm not being flippant about that, but it's still not the piano, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And... <clears throat> Since going on this whole, I don't know, journey, or you know, since you started like just throwing yourself into all of this, like I'm kind of putting you on the yeah. spot. So if you can't think of one immediately, don't worry. But like, have you had any? What, what's going to be in the biggest sort of like aha or like light bulb moments? This sounds really silly, and I'm going to describe it, and it might, it might, it might, yeah, it just might seem really simple and obvious, but to me, it was really profound. I was sat on a beach late at night. And it was a beach where there was this extraordinary um, wave crashing. And it kind of, the beach was about, I don't know, a mile or two miles long. And, and, the, and the wave, it sounded like one wave. And the way the beach was angled, so this wave started breaking at one end of the beach. And it kind of tore across the front of the beach. And went about, I was in the middle and it went about a mile that way. And it was like someone ripping a massive piece of paper. You know, it was an extraordinary noise. And it went from a mile away to a mile away on the other side. And I just sat there listening to this. And I turned to my friend and I was like, just close your eyes for a minute and imagine you're in a living room and you're listening to the most amazing hi-fi stereo equipment in the world, Right. And so we listened to this wave noise, this nature noise, as though it was a hi-fi. And for about 10 minutes, we listened to the most impressive hi-fi sound system you have ever heard in your life, right? And it, I mean, it, it just sounded exquisite. And I was like, oh, my God, it would be amazing to have a hi-fi this good. I love, me and my friend, we love, really, we love music. So high-quality hi-fi equipment. Is something I could be arguably accused of being attached to. So, um, and I then, it sounds stupid, but then I realized, I also thought to myself, if I had a hi-fi this good, I would only ever listen to nature sounds on it, right? Because it just sounds, you don't need music. It's, this is a symphony of noise. And then it just struck me that we, we have that hi-fi. It's like, that's nature, you know, it's that noise, it's everywhere. And it, that did, for me, it was a, it, the, just laughing at the human psychology is constantly overcomplicating what is always a divine universe. And, and for me, spirituality is not about adding anything to you. I'm not into personal development. I'm into using tools to help you remember your innate divinity. And this constant binary of being expressed in this form so that we can forget and then have the bliss of remembrance, you know? It's like, like it's just, it's a beautiful, what an amazing opportunity to be embodied, you know, and, and playing this game of remembrance, you know. 
That's amazing. But just not, not to take it too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and just a couple of few round questions. What does a fulfilled life mean to you? Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, it's really, it's really about being at peace with who you are, having the power to be able to create the life that you will enjoy, and and being driven by that purpose, like of 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 really understanding that it is okay to give yourself permission to really craft out a, like an amazing life that you're really proud of, that is really about you being in bliss. You know, that to me, to having that freedom. And, 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 and including in that all the things that would need to be in there, you know, which is contribution and collaboration and creativity and all those things that, you know, that's been well documented. What does a human need to be happy? But for me, it's really about really receiving that permission that it is okay to really sit down and design the perfect life and go for making it happen. That's great. Yeah. And what's one thing all our listeners can do today that will have a massive positive effect on their lives? For me, one of the key principles that I learned, uh, which I'm most passionate about, is the fact that actually the human mind um, will respond to your instructions very powerfully. And you are able to set an intention before any experience to transform that experience into a healing metaphor. And so the reason why I create a whole bunch of recordings that enable people to do deep healing on themselves is you can use music. So music's powerful. But before you listen to music, if, you're, if your listeners have got a challenge, so they want more courage, more clarity, uh, more confidence, whatever it might be, more understanding, more healing, get themselves into a relaxed state, ideally, whether that's meditating or just getting present in their body, and then telling themselves very clearly in communicating to your unconscious mind and saying, in a few moments' time, I'm going to listen to a piece of music. That music is the sound of me experiencing this change or this increase or this improvement. Just really trusting that the music has that power and then put on a powerful piece of music and listen to that music, trusting that the unconscious changes necessary to make that change are happening with every single note. And you will be amazed at what happens the insights the clarity and the physical changes and the, so the more you do that the more you'll trust it and the more you can t- go from listening to music for the pleasure to listening to music for the transformation your heart your heart and your mind is just eagerly awaiting you to listen to the messages that it has to help liberate you they're gagging to help but another little tip is to listen to every single love song that you ever hear as a song from either your heart to you or from God to you or from you to God or to, to use every love song you ever hear to increase your feelings of unconditional self. Unconditional self-love. So is every single one you listen to it's actually written for you or it's your for song? For you, from you. Okay. For you, from you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that. To me, it's, this, it's the FMP. It's Free My Metaphorical Program. I mean, it's a, it's a key principle in the practices. It's you can take any experience and make it mean something, and then you will experience it. So for me, before I have every massage, I tell myself, and I don't believe in a separate divine God, right? I believe in a singular field of consciousness, right? But before I go for a massage, I believe in a separate bearded God, and He is behind me giving me the massage. <laughs> right. He's there going, good work, Tom. You're spreading the love. I'm just down. Good. I'm going to get into your shoulders now because that, that chat on Skype you had with Spirit Pig was awesome. And, like, you know, <laughs> it's just like I'll receive that as thanks. So it will transform your experiences of massage. <laughs> All right, good. Note to self. <laughs> and are there any books or resources which have changed or had a massive impact on you? Yeah, I mean, so many. Um, um, I guess my top three favorite books, um, uh, first one's I Am That by Nisargadatta Maharaj. Uh, that's re- it's a very dense spiritual text around oneness and the nature of consciousness. For me, it's the ultimate book on spirituality. Um, it takes you, it took me ages to read it and I had to sit there and I didn't understand it and I still don't understand all of it, but it's, it's dense, but it's, it's a meditation in itself, just wrapping your head around those ideas. Uh, the other end, but no less powerful, is Dr. Zeus's Oh, The Places You'll Go. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, it's 
one of the best books ever written. It really describes the nature of what it is to be human. And it <coughs> is incredibly motivational. And it's a Dr. Zeus book. Um, if you want to see a really beautiful version, I recommend your listeners go onto YouTube and search other places you'll go, Burning Man. Because the words of the book have been said by the coolest, most colorful characters at Burning Man. And it's a beautiful... It's a beautiful way of being introduced to the extraordinarily cool and awesome Burning Man Festival and, and this ex exquisite book, which was the last book he wrote before he died, which I think is significant. And I guess another one for me, which is a real game changer, which is simple but massive, um, which is A Course in Miracles, which is an absolute spiritual classic and is just about truth and forgiveness, just truth, love and forgiveness. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. I'm going to chuck all those in the show notes. And finally, how can people stay in touch, find out about you, your book, like your work? Where can we send them? Thank you. Yeah, it's all, if you go to freemind, www.freemindproject.org, you'll find out about the book, the recordings, and the events. And you can also download the event templates there so you can run your own kind of free mind parties and stuff like that. Oh, incredible. Thank you so much. It really, really has been, yeah, just we've taken it on a couple of different different topics but it's been uh, it's been fascinating thank you so much tom uh well listen just as a final note just on that point i did as it was slightly cheeky with the book which i have a copy here uh um it comes with a hypnosis recording it's not about making you happy that hypnosis recording hypnotizes you so that the reading of the book is a happiness generating ritual i use the same principle so that it could just say blah 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 and it would mean that you're more likely to be happy but it doesn't it gives you loads of good tips <laughs> But it's, it's, I'm using one of the principles in this recording so that it encourages you before you even read it to just stare at the cover and to take a moment to, to set the intention that the reading of the book will make you happier. And so, um, yeah, I really recommend if you are going to read the book um, to listen to that hypnosis recording because it makes it way more powerful. And so, listen, thank you so much for, for giving me this opportunity to talk about what I care about. No, thank you. Great. It's been absolutely fascinating, and we're going to chuck as well as obviously the books you mentioned. I'm going to put yours in big bold below that below the video as well. So if anyone you know, wants to find out more and actually get your book, um, so thank you so much. It's been absolutely fascinating. I love talking to you.